Level 7, Key Stage 3, Examination Questions. Now here we have a distance time graph. The distance is in kilometres. And whenever you see any sort of graph, spend a few minutes just checking the scale. So this is going 1 kilometre, 2 kilometres, 3 kilometres. Along here, the time, that's 9.30 that's 10 o'clock, so that is in fact half an hour. 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. So we've got some questions on this distance time graph. The simplified distance time graph shows how Sam used a running machine. The reason it says simplified is in fact because it's made up of straight lines and in reality they would be a bit squiggly. So that's all the simplified means. Between 9.30 and 9.40 what was her speed in kilometres per hour? Now we need to know the connection between distance, speed and time. And distance equals speed multiplied by time. So if we're going to work out the speed, we need to rearrange this and make it speed equals distance divided by time. So between 9.30 and 9.40, the time is 10 minutes. Now let's see what the distance is. Now from the graph, there's 9.30, there's 9.40. So the distance is in fact this one kilometre. Now because we're doing kilometres per hour, the first thing we have to do is to rearrange this and change it so that it is kilometres over hours. Now a minute is a sixth of an hour. So if we want kilometres per hour, then the bottom must be in hours. So we now have one top number divided by a sixth, the bottom number. Whenever you divide fractions, you turn, this, you turn the second fraction upside down and call it multiplication. Or you could have worked it out there, one divided by a sixth is six. And that's kilometres per hour. Now another thing to notice is in fact, when we worked out that value as being one kilometre, and we worked out that value as being 10 minutes. And we put that value over that value. We're actually finding the gradient of the line. So we need to appreciate that the gradient on a distance time graph equals speed. Gradient on a distance time graph equals speed. So it's another way of thinking about that. Now part B continues the question, throughout the run, for how many minutes did she travel at this speed? So if we look at the graph, we'll find that that part of the graph and that part of the graph are in fact exactly the same gradient. So because gradient on a distance time graph is speed, and these two gradients are the same, it means she's travelling at the same speed between 9.30 and 9.40 and between 9.50 and 10 o'clock. In other words, 10 minutes and 10 minutes, a total of 20 minutes, she is travelling at that speed. Another part, part C. At 9.40 she increased her speed. How many kilometres per hour did she increase her speed? By how many kilometers per hour did she increase her speed? Well, the first thing we better do is to work out the speed that she attains over this period. So we've got the distance, which is in fact one and a half kilometers. 
and we've got the time which again is 10 minutes. So the gradient of this line is 1.5 over 10. Or as we've already said, speed equals the distance divided by the time, which is the same as the gradient, 1.5 over 10. But appreciate that is 1.5 kilometres, and that is 10 minutes. And if we're going to be considering kilometres per hour, then we do need the top part to be kilometres, which it is, and the bottom part to be hours, which it isn't yet. Now it is. So therefore we need to do the top of the fraction divided by the bottom of the fraction. Now we need to appreciate, to work with a mixed number, when you're dividing, you have to change it to a top heavy fraction like that. Then we need to appreciate that to divide fractions you turn the second fraction upside down. Then it becomes a multiplication and you can do 3 6 is 18 and once 2 is 2, which is therefore 9 kilometres per hour. Now that is the speed that she travels at between 940 and 950. The question actually says, by how many kilometres did she increase her speed? So the answer is 9 kilometres minus 6 kilometres of the first part of the journey. So this is, is in fact her increase in speed. Quite a lot to that part of that question, I think you'd agree. And we still haven't finished this question. Because we're now at part D. On another day, Sam started running at 9.35. She ran for 24 minutes at a constant speed of 10 km per hour. Show this information on the graph. So, we're still going to use the graph because we've got to show this information on the graph. Now, there's several ways that this can be done. I'm just going to show you one of the ways. So, let's start at 9.35. So on this graph, if that's 9.30 and that's 9.40, that must be 9.35. Now she's going to travel at 10 kilometres per hour. That means 10 kilometres in an hour. But my graph axis doesn't read an hour. So let's just think about that. There's going to be 5 kilometres in half an hour. So can I go half an hour? If that's 9.35, 10.35 is off my graph, so that's no good. So let's say that's the same as two and a half kilometres in a quarter of an hour. 15 minutes. Now let's see if we can use that piece of information. So from this point, I can go 5, 10, 15 minutes. And we've just worked out that in 15 minutes she's going to do two and a half kilometres. 15 minutes she's going to do one, two and a half kilometres. So if she travelled for a quarter of an hour, then in fact this would show the information. But, it says, she only travelled for 24 minutes. So, if I look at this graph and go 5, 10, 15, 20, 21, 2, 3, 4, and go up here, that's in fact where the graph has got to go up to. So first off I worked out how steep to draw the graph to show that she did two and a half kilometres in quarter of an hour. Then I made sure the graph was long enough to show travelling for 24 minutes. Now that is an extremely demanding question. 
Well, let's hope this question's a little less demanding.